Hello, are you preparing for the Praxis Physical Science exam? My name is Derek Masiaga, I'm with study.com, and I'm going to help walk you through some example physics problems from this exam. Let's get into it. Problem 1. Which of the following best describes the principle of conservation of matter in relation to chemical reactions? A. The total amount of matter decreases after a chemical reaction. B. The total amount of matter increases after a chemical reaction. C. Total amount of matter remains constant before and after a chemical reaction. Or D. The total amount of matter can either increase or decrease after a chemical reaction. Okay, so they're testing us on our knowledge of the principle of conservation of matter. Here's a little tip. Any law of conservation, whether it's the conservation of matter or the conservation of energy or the conservation of momentum, they all pretty much say the same thing. And what, they, what, this, what these conservation laws are saying is that whatever total amount you had before is going to equal what you have afterwards. And so the correct answer here is going to be uh, letter choice C because it's telling us that the amount of matter remains constant. Okay, question two. Which of the following best describes the process of conduction as a mechanism of energy transfer? Is it A, the transfer of energy through electromagnetic waves? B, the transfer of energy through direct contact? C, the transfer of energy through the movement of fluids? Or D, the transfer of energy through the emission of light? So process of conduction. When I think of conduction, I think of materials that are our conductors, and conductors allow um, electricity and heat to flow easily. And so when thinking in the context of allowing electricity to flow within a circuit, we need to have all of the wires connected for that to happen. And for heat to flow, um, let's kind of think in the context of maybe cooking something on a frying pan. If we want our food to cook on the frying pan, we actually need to put it on the frying pan. So with electricity, we need the wires in contact. With the transfer of heat, we need the, the food in contact with the, the heating ma uh, material. And so the correct answer here is gonna be choice B. Conduction is a means of transferring energy through direct contact. None of the other options kind of fit that narrative. Problem three, a certain radioactive element has a half-life of two million years. If you start with 100 grams of the element, how much of the element would remain after six million years? All right, note, you will not be able to use a calculator on this uh, exam, but we don't really need to... You know, the math here is going to be simple enough where we don't even need a calculator. First of all, we need to remember, what is a half-life? So they tell us that we have a half-life of 2 million years. And what a half-life is, is that after that time period, we take our sample and we cut it down in half. So we are starting with 100 grams. And they want us to know how much would remain after six million years, okay? So let's, let's kind of do this uh, process. So after one half-life, let's say two million years pass by, we're gonna be down to 50 grams because that is the definition of a half-life. We have taken 100 and cut it down to half. All right, let's do another two million years. Okay, we're now going to be down to 25 grams because we took what we had of 50 and we cut that into half. All right, so we're at a total of 4 million years right now. we got to go one more time. Another 2 million years pass by. We are now at a total of 6 million years. We need to cut our 25 in half, so we are now down to 12.5 grams. So that is going to be our answer. Finally, question four. Which of the following best describes the phase change from liquid to gas in a substance's heating curve? A, the temperature of the substance continues to increase during the phase change. B, the substance's temperature remains constant during the phase change. 
C, the substance becomes solid during the phase change, or D, the substance's temperature decreases during the phase change. So we're going from a liquid to a gas. So automatically, that means that we are heating up. Okay, to go from a liquid to a gas implies that we have an increase in temperature. So I already know that C and D are not the correct answers. Because if we were going to a solid, that would mean that we were taking basically uh, liquid water and freezing it to solid ice. And then, uh, as I mentioned, option D says the temperature goes down. That is not the case here. And so this is kind of testing us on our knowledge of um, kind of a, a phase change uh, graph. And so in a, in a phase change graph, we kind of have this kind of step, step up pattern, okay? where this is um, time and this is temperature, okay? And it turns out that when we have a phase change, the temperature actually flattens out, okay? So if this is like cold temperatures down here and this is hot up here, What this would represent is that maybe our liquid is in the ice, you know, frozen solid state. And so when it increases the temperature, as it goes from being a solid to a liquid, the temperature remains constant during that time. So in the case of our problem, going from a liquid to a gas, that would be this right here. Okay, we are in this, in this part of the graph, we are a liquid. And then as we reach the boiling point, okay, this water cannot go beyond its boiling point. There's a certain limit to how much temperature the, that liquid can be. And that is why it flattens out here. It takes all that time to convert from a liquid to a gas. And so our correct um, answer here is going to be option B, the substance's temperature remains constant during the phase change. All right, well, I hope this video is helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos, and then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis test prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you're still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we want to hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful. And then let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying.